Welcome back. This is my, I believe it's my fourth video on polynomials. If you have any questions, absolutemathmax at yahoo.ca. Alright, so this is our next theorem. It's similar to the last one. It's actually very similar. It's called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra 2. And it states that every polynomial of degree n greater or equal to 1 has n zeros. Okay, well, from the last video, you should know what a degree is. And if you don't know, go back to the last video and I explain it. But anyways, what is a zero? Okay, well, if we take uh, the polynomial, let's say y, we'll call it a function now. y equals x squared minus 1. But we'll still treat it like polynomial because it's essentially the same thing. Okay, so you should know that x squared minus 1 is a, a parabola on the Cartesian plane, which I have right here. So if we draw this, it's a parabola and it gets displaced down by 1. So if we draw this, we get something like this. It's poorly drawn, but whatever. You get a parabola and it moves down by 1. So here's minus 1. Now what a 0 is, is that whenever you're on this x-axis, y is equal to 0. And that's where the name comes from. So it's when y equals to 0, x squared minus 1, you have x squared minus 1, you want to find what values of x will make it so that y equals 0. Okay, well, we can do this um, algebraically, and we see that x plus 1 and x minus 1 give us x squared minus 1. So we know that x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to plus 1 and we can see it geometrically on our um, plane that right here this is going to be 1 and this is going to be minus 1 so we know this is true this proves that because this is of degree we'll just call it n is equal to 2 that this should have two zeros and if we look we find that it has two linear factors and from each linear factor we can find one of the zeros. So from this one we found that x equals to minus 1 and x is equal to 1. And when we plug these in, minus 1 to our um, function here, minus 1, we get 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So y would be equal to 0, so it is a 0. And then we plug in the 1, 1 squared minus 1 uh, you got 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so this is also a 0, and we can see that right here. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Um, we can do examples where we have a function y is equal to x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. And we look for the degree, and remember the degree is the highest power, so the degree here is, is equal to 4. Which means, if you remember from the last video, that this function, or this polynomial, has 4 linear factors. But from our new theorem, we now know that it also has the same amount of zeros. Because, let um, these aren't the real linear factors, but let's just say they are. If these were the linear factors that equal to y, well then from each linear factor you can find one of the zeros. So here x plus 1 is equal to 0, so you know that x is equal to minus 1. And here, same thing, you do x plus 2 is equal to 0, well, x is equal to minus 2, and you keep doing it, and so on and so forth. So this is a 0, this is a 0, and you do one for here. x is equal to 1, and here as x is equal to minus 3. And you can see that it also has 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So remember, the degree of a polynomial not only determines how many linear factors you have, but also how many zeros you can find. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll be posting the other video soon.